This program is brought to you by Link TV for educational and non-commercial use only. A Nigerian student boards a U.S. airliner with explosives. A Jordanian doctor kills seven CIA operatives in Afghanistan. Has Al-Qaeda changed its tactics? And will new security measures at airports prevent a future attack? Answers to these questions and more on Link TV's Mosaic Intelligence Report. I am less interested in passing out blame than I am in learning from and correcting these mistakes to make us safer. For ultimately, the buck stops with me. The buck stops with me, declared President Obama on Thursday as he spoke about the results of an internal investigation into the failed Christmas Day airline bombing attempt. The president avoided blaming any particular agency or official for the security failures that allowed Nigerian Omar Farouk Abdul Muttalib to board an American airliner heading from Amsterdam to Detroit wearing explosives in his underpants. Let's be clear about what this moment demands. We are at war. We are at war against Al Qaeda. Now, after the fact, this incident has sparked a renewed interest in Yemen a country I warned about as a powder keg back in August, and a slew of new security measures at airports to make our travel experience more miserable than it currently is. Travelers will soon get used to going through full body scanners like they have gotten used to taking off their shoes at security checkpoints at airports since Richard Reed, aka the shoe bomber, tried unsuccessfully to take down another airliner in late 2001. The decision is provocative and a violation of human rights and freedoms. It's also an invasion of privacy, which is against Islamic Sharia and international laws. They are violating the very same laws they are claiming to respect and follow. Unfortunately, Al-Qaeda and other groups will try to find other methods to bypass the new security measures until they succeed. Last summer, Abdullah Asseri, one of Saudi Arabia's most wanted men, avoided detection by two sets of airport security, including metal detectors and palace security, by borrowing a trick from the Colombian cartel. Asseri had a pound of high explosives plus a detonator inserted in his rectum. His target was Prince Mohammed bin Nayef, head of Saudi Arabia's counter-terrorism operations. The bomb was remotely detonated via a cellular phone call, but the prince miraculously was left lightly wounded. The assassination attempt failed, but Al-Qaeda managed to defeat security. The U.S. security failure is not at airports, but rather with overseas intelligence agencies. The president did not name the agency, but I will. The CIA, which has done a shoddy job of gathering information in Arab and Muslim countries and has relied heavily on information provided by security agencies of corrupt and despotic regimes. All of these agencies and their leaders are responsible for implementing these reforms and all will be held accountable if they don't. What Americans should be worried about is not the few failed attempts by the likes of Reed or Abdul Muttalib, but rather by what happened recently with the suicide bomber Humam Khalil Abu Mulal al Bilawi, a medical doctor who had been recruited by Jordanian intelligence and then agreed to work for the CIA. He was assigned a Jordanian handler who had a close working relationship with the CIA and was subsequently sent to Afghanistan to help locate top Al Qaeda leaders. In reality, he was also a jihadist sent to infiltrate U.S. intelligence, a triple agent. The reason this succeeded is due to the fact that Afghanistan is an intelligence nightmare and the CIA does not have enough Arabic or Pashto speakers on the ground. This is also the case in Yemen, Somalia and Northern Africa, a fact that was confirmed to me by a former CIA employee. Many of the CIA's so-called Middle East specialists lack the language skills needed to analyze the material provided to them and rely on translations, which as part of my experience producing a news show from the Middle East, I've discovered can be misleading and inaccurate. 
Many CIA agents are no different than those so-called experts on Al-Qaeda that one sees on CNN or Fox News. This latest infiltration of the CIA is worse than a thousand Abdul Muttalibs and will certainly cause a setback to the agency for years to come, something that the president did not talk about. I'm Jamal Dajani for the Mosaic Intelligence Report. To learn more about this program or to share your thoughts, visit us at linktv.org slash mir. You can also follow my updates on Twitter. This program is brought to you by Link TV for educational and non-commercial use only. Link TV is the only U.S. network dedicated to global and national news, uncompromising documentaries, and diverse cultural programs, programs which connect you to the world.